Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings once again, everyone. Um, I cannot begin to express my pleasure um, in just discussing this wonderful subject. It's one of the most important subjects ever uh, known to men. Um, there are many things that we discuss in life. Um, there are many things that we do in life, but this, 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 this one subject is the is the subject of hope. Someone said to me once, "You may lose everything, but never lose hope." Well, I'm saying to you tonight, today, and to the world at large. In a world where we can lose everything, we shouldn't lose hope. But where is that hope? Where do we find that hope? That hope is found in no one else but he who created. It is found in the creator who loved his creation so much that when everything had gone wrong, he didn't destroy the creation. But rather, what I did do? Let's pause there. So, walk with me through memory lane or rather through the pages of history. You see, the Bible is nothing but a history book. Yes, with some futuristic history as well, because prophecy is history in the future, history yet to be written. So the Bible is nothing but history. It's just a history book. Yes, you can think of it as one book. I think of it as a collection of books. It's a library for me. So in this book, I find 66 books and a huge number of authors um, spending a period of 1,500 years discussing the one subject of importance, the beginning and the end of man. What shall be hereafter? So, as we go through the history book, Let's, just, let's not go too far for now. Let's just go in about 2,000 years ago. So 2,000 years ago, we come across the man Jesus, born of a virgin. Did I say that right? Let me check. Did I say born of a virgin? Yes, born of a virgin. So we... Okay, let me comment on this. So, um, today people tell you, well, science knows how to make a virgin pregnant. But consider that time when knowledge had not increased to the level at which it has increased today. When we were so ignorant, we didn't know how to make a cell phone. At that very time, when we were so ignorant, we didn't know how to talk to someone very far away, when we had not yet made radios, when we had not discovered um, waves, radio waves, electromagnetic waves, when, it, when, it, when, when, when we were so ignorant, uh, we, we didn't know that magnetism and electricity were the same phenomenon. When, when Maxwell had not yet written his equations on which rests the advancements of technology as far as telecommunications is concerned. Yes, that time. A virgin got pregnant. So she had a vision in which an angel told her she was going to get pregnant. The Holy Spirit would make her pregnant. The Holy Spirit would put a fetus inside of her. So everyone else is born of a man. But this one person, the only person to walk um, uh, this earth, except this uh, first two parents, is born. Every person, every person is born of a man. But this one person is not born of a man. So he is born of the will of God. He enters the womb as a fetus. It is he who was Jehovah who spoke to Moses and gave the Ten Commandments. 
It was he who gave the most, um, the simplest and most elaborate law ever known to man. It was he who gave a constitution single-handedly without consulting um, others. A constitution that people would look at back in the days, about 4,000 years ago, and people would say, surely the God of the Jews is a wise God. For what people is there so great? We have wisdom such as this. So, we are talking about this man Jesus, who is the beginning of the creation of God. <laughs> because without him was not anything made that was made. I, I think it's ridiculous for, for us, um, and, and I, I'm speaking this under authority. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a trained uh, scientist. I do, theoret I do theoretical physics research for a living. But I still think it's ridiculous to think that the world as it is just evolved from nowhere. That the universe just evolved from nowhere, from nowhere, I, I mean, as in nowhere. I think it's that amount to saying, hmm, we know that the, this book comes from a tree. So the ink comes from somewhere. So the words written therein, I print, uh, I print by that ink, from that ink, or using that ink. But the pages are made from a tree. They are made from paper which comes from a tree. Now, how long will it take? How long will it take for the tree to evolve into paper and then from the pap for the paper to further evolve into a well-designed book? And for the, for the uh, designed book to evolve, to develop words, how long would it take by evolution without an external agent? How long? Is it even possible? Is it a reasonable assumption to make? Think about it. So, Jesus, the Bible tells us that, there's a history book, it tells us that in the beginning, it was God who created. And Jesus is the beginning of that creation. He was the word through which God was creating. Interesting. So, as God created, let me tell you this, just for, just, just, just for my learned um, audience and learned friends, let me tell you this. When Albert Einstein wrote his 1905 paper on special relativity, he assumed that light the speed of light does not depend on the speed of the source of light. And that's ridiculous. Because if there's an ambulance coming, so light is just a wave, just like sound. But if there's an ambulance coming with a, uh, with a, single, uh, with a single note siren, as it is approaching, I can hear, I can tell from the, from the sound, from the pitch of that, uh, of that siren, that the ambulance is actually approaching me. I can tell from the loudness that it's actually approaching me. And as it passes, I can tell that it's passing. I don't need to open my eyes. I can tell that it's... And as it, um, as it moves away from me, I can tell that now it's moving away from me as the noise, as the sound of the siren fades away. But then, um, so, so in other words, the properties of waves should depend on the source, on the motion of the source. But Einstein predict, I mean, um, assumed that for light, that for light, the speed of light is independent of the speed of the source. How did it get to that? Well, Einstein was Jewish, so he read at least the Old Testament of the Bible. And it is in the Old Testament, right in Genesis 1, chapter 1, that we are told that in the beginning, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Verse 2, 
And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth and uh, the face of the deep. And the Spirit of, uh, of God um, moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And, there and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God um, called the light day, and the darkness he called night, um, and the uh, evening and the morning were the first day. And then there was the second day, and then there was the third day. And then after the third day, we get to the fourth day. So verse 14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament uh, of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let there be uh, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them uh, be for for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights uh, so he made the moon he made the sun to rule the day so when the sun rises and it, when it sets so it's ruling the day and he made the night, the moon to rule the night. He also made the stars. Now, let's pick up something here. When God was creating, he created the light first on the first day. Not the source. Hmm. When God was creating, he created the light first. Not the source. And then later on, four days late, and yet on time, what does he create? The source. So today we know of light as coming from the sun, as coming from the moon, as coming from the stars. As far as the Bible account tells us as a history book, the creation was that of light first, and then, and then the source. Maybe, maybe, maybe as humanity, we need God first. Let me make that more affirmative. As humanity, we need God first. So God created the light and then the source. Now, Albert Einstein thinks about this and like, so the light is independent of the source. And he makes that assumption. And in making that assumption, and in making that assumption, he writes one of the most profound and most successful theories about nature ever. But where did he get that inspiration? God created the light first, and only four days late, later does he create the source. So the light should behave independently, should have some properties, light in general should have some properties that are independent of the sources because light was created first, and then the source. Right now, you can watch soccer from, um, I don't know, um, wherever Barcelona playing some other team, live. Right now, you can, uh, and that uses uh, some satellites in, in, in space. Right now, you can watch, um, uh, you can use your GPS. And that GPS uses this, for, for that GPS to be accurate, it uses the, the theory that was written by Einstein. But what, did I, where, what was the first, Einstein, the first assumption that Einstein made? That light was created first. And not the source. So the light should have properties that are independent of the source. I, I think that's, that's, that's really profound. If anything, it goes to show how some ridiculous, uh, or, or, or should I say, some points that appear ridiculous in scripture are actually valid. Jesus is born to the virgin and he walks the earth. For 30 years, he teaches us how to live. And what does he expect of us? sinlessness the things about the things about life that we don't understand so there are things like why 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 should you love your wife why does a witch even love his uh, his um his or her uh, uh, children why does a murderer love someone else 
Why does a murderer perhaps love a mother? A parent? So there are things that we don't understand, things like love. And they cannot be explained, in my view, outside of scripture. There are things that only make sense, only make sense when we consider this book. So in our journey backwards, uh, 2000 years, we find Christ who was born to a virgin. Totally ridiculous idea. Died on the cross and resurrected without the help of men. It is this Christ whom we worship today. It is this God whom we worship today. The scripture is a true book. Yes, it is marred by errors of men as they try to explain the love of God. But that love is as clear in scripture as it is in your heart towards your spouse. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Mm -hmm.